Chase turned the car onto the road and towards downtown. It was about a 40-minute a drive through a changing terrain from the country area that surrounded the prison to abandoned houses and unkept lawns. The scenery changed into suburban streets that gave way to an inner-city post-apocalyptic landscape. Both of them stayed silent for the drive, taking in each individual's transition. Some places you would think hadn't been touched by either the crime nor the death Biggs brought. Some areas looked completely abandoned its previous inhabitants no, no longer there. Saren tried to imagine them having moved on to the, a better place like a country house or in the mountains where they'd be completely overlooked. Then there was the final phase of the drive, the city. Chase laughed at himself when he imagined the landscape to resemble a scene out of the animated movie Wall-E. At least I still have my sense of humor, right? He took over, he looked over at Saren curled up in the passenger seat, her arms still around her legs with his jacket draped over her. A look of being lost covering her face. All he wanted to do was pull her into him and comfort her. Where do you think he is? He, his eyes scanned the passing alleyways and corners, turning his mind back to their search. He's usually on the corner of West Maryland Street in South Capitol. We should check there. She stared out the window at the buildings as they passed them. All right, not much, not that's not much further. He turned on to West Maryland just a few blocks away from South Capitol and started watching each person on the sidewalk at the city drove slightly under the speed limit. Saren sat up in her seat, still curled into herself. She pointed as they approached his usual corner. There, he's right there. She unfastened her seatbelt as they came to a stop. Stay here and keep the car running. I'll go ask if you'll come with us so we can talk somewhere else. Will do, but don't hesitate to let me know if you need my help. He pulled a pen knife out of his pocket and slid it into her hand, just in case. He won't hurt me, Chase, trust me. She held it out for him to take it back. He t- shook his head, refusing to take it. You say you trust this guy, that's fine, but I'm not taking any chances. Besides, even if it's not him that's crazy, you never know who else is lurking around here. Fair enough, she pulled the knife and gave him a reassuring look. I'll bring him right back here. I'd much rather talk to him in a diner or something, not in the open. Okay, just watch around you as well. Will do. She shut the car door and turned towards Robert Bridgeport, who was passing out flyers to anyone who would take them, which really wasn't many since most people had already encountered him standing on this very corner, preaching about the evils of something most people embraced. He turned towards her, a look of recognition in his eyes. He didn't say anything. His arms fell to his sides and shoulders dropped. His chin to his chest, he addressed her. Miss Car- Charstair, I wish I could say it was a pleasure to see you. Are you angry with me? She stopped a few feet from him. He looked at, up at her, pulling something out of his pocket. No, but I know why you've come to see me after all these years. His arm lifting. Saren, Chase was running towards them. Saren moved. He jumped in between them, arms reaching back to, the, to protect her. Robert turned his palm, revealing another, much larger metal piece. Silly boy, I wouldn't hurt her. Well, you can't be too careful, Chase scowled at him. Saren lowered one of Chase's arms, stepping up next to him. What is that? Robert looked down at the flat piece of metal, etched with grooves that appeared to be in no particular design. This is one of the things you will need. He put put a hand on her shoulder. I'm assuming you didn't come to just catch up after all these years. Please come with us. I have so many questions, she motioned towards the car. I shouldn't. If they see me with you, they'll know what you're doing. He cupped the metal piece in his hand, turning it over and thrusting it at Saren. But I don't know what I'm doing, she pleaded with him. Please, I don't care if we go to your place or a diner or whatever. Saren, it is very dangerous. He shook his head. Chase intervened. For who? Her or yourself? Robert flashed a stabbing look. Saren is like family to me. Some family, you abandoned her just like her family did, he cut into him. I've been trying to save this world that's quickly spiraling out of control these days, if you haven't noticed, but my inactivity in Saren's life hasn't been for lack of caring. It's because I'm trying to keep her out of it and keep her safe, he took a step back. Chase looked at Saren. Yeah, well, her parents dragged her into it, so now we need some answers. Fine, Robert huffed. I'll meet you at the Shelby Street Diner at four, but take this now, just in case. He grabbed Saren's hand and placed the new metal piece in a small piece of paper into it. If I don't show, follow the instructions on this paper. Promise me. Sure thing, she nodded, staring at the folded paper in her palm. 
Now please leave. You never know who's watching. He walked back to his corner. She started to unfold the paper, but Chase put a hand over her hers. Not here. Let's get out of here. I'm starting to get a really bad feeling. I don't care if he's crazy or not. He's right. You never know who's watching. You're starting to sound like them. They walked back towards the car. Well, yeah, this is all a bit creepy. I don't really want to take any chances. He put a hand on her back and shrugged. A few feet from the car, Chase spotted a boy, couldn't have been but a year or two out of his teens, running in the direction of the car that he'd been that he'd left running when he went after Saren. The boy threw the door open and threw it into gear. Before the wheels could make more than an inch rotation, the car exploded, the shock wave of the explosion throwing them and several other bystanders to the ground. <laughs> and a piece of metal lodging into Saren's left side, sending a searing pain through her. She cried out. Chase looked over, looked at her over, seeing the shard sticking through her jacket, blood staining the material. Are you hurt anywhere else, he yelled. I don't think so. She tried to, to take inventory of her body through the ringing in her ears. Her breath was jagged. People were screaming, running everywhere. A few people ran to the scene. Some rushed to those hurt, while others made calls on their phones. Some even started gathering purses and bags thrown all over the chaos. Okay, a robber had dropped to the ground. He rose to a crouch and made his way to them, surveying the room. It needs to be removed. Chase grabbed Robert's arm. Don't touch her. Robert looked up at him. She won't be able to move to get herself out of here if we leave it in. It's longer than you think. I saw it hit her. Once we remove it, we can get her out of here and somewhere where we can bandage her up. Then I'll answer any of your questions, including where you can find what you need for those metal and what those metal pieces are for. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Now I can't wait.